pitcher of water. Aha. So, cheers to you all out there. Stay hydrated and let's keep let's keep thinking. Let's keep going. I love this last villain that we made. And uh, and I, I threw a couple thoughts out there for y'all to chew on, and if you have any feedback, I'm open for it, right? Thought that the ancient PC halfling could be the one who could forgive the villain we created. Uh, she hasn't changed, and he has, and he doesn't remember her. But his eventual forgiveness can undo her spite or some such. Uh, she may all maybe she did this to try and win his attention back in the day. Um, you know, he's very old, and she could have gone off crusade. And like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, it's gonna be a good story. You're gonna, you know, you're gonna make a book about me one day. And maybe he never did, but, you know, there she keeps going, trying to get that attention, because he's the best there is. Uh, and again, everything is around storytelling. It's around history. It's around religion. And to have a, a story form around that as a compelling reason fits very well. All right, so she may, uh, also she may view the necromancy that comes from being an Oathbreaker as a form of giving life and restoring it. So maybe after killing someone in a duel, she'll raise the person up and it'll count as a follower. You know, she's a cultist after all. Reskin, reflavor. Oathbreaker paladins don't have to, you know, be evil and have fallen from a gut. She very well could be embracing this other god. She broke her original oath, but this new one is giving her these different powers. And if it's not from a god or a domain, it's from her own sense of self. Um, okay, let's begin again. We have our prompt sheet, should we need it. We'll go back and reference it. In fact, let's take a quick look here. Villain prompts a figure from the past who is a villain for the character he's reliving, Elias. So this is, you know, an old grudge. It, it's the Azrael to the Batman. Um, ignorance is a topic. Ignorance uh, for a decade. So ignorance maybe never came with this other villain. So that could be an open... Uh, source to, uh, to think about. She learns if someone set uh, her house on fire. Uh, that could be a villain for sure. Um, we, I think we fulfilled the people responsible for taking her lands and killing her family. There, this could open up to the possibility of a red dragon or the family whose blood ru uh, runs through her. Uh, we could come up with some sort of a pirate or a raider or bandit captain uh, that's been just vicious. Like, pure bad guy. Kills... Um, steals, uh, just plunders, uh, you know, and depending in the context that we're discussing storytelling, um, and, and we do keep the, you know, we keep the channel, you know, PG-13 safe for work. We can discuss topics that might be, uh, beyond that touching it or otherwise could be a taboo, you know, religion, politics, or sex. You know, you could have a bad guy that uh, is very sexually violent as well. Um, if you do, make sure that, you know, you're reading the audience for whom you're running. Uh, Pete and Jeremy brought this up, actually, on their, on their broadcast earlier tonight. Um, if your campaign is going to feature... These, uh, you know, the, the acts of, you know, the, the absolute dredges of humanity, you know, and we're talking people who will kill children. If we wanted to, t to take the story in a darker manner and we make the arsonist who killed Carol Londra's husband and uh, her son, you know, her infant son was playing with blocks, learning the alphabet for the first time. You know, if we get into, you know, the murder of children or if we get into topics such as rape. They can be very powerful storytelling tools. They can also be used in a flippant way that isn't telling a story or adding to it. But instead, it just sort of becomes a joke or it is treated in a crass manner. Now, I mean, for the culture, you know, here, oh, sure, you could have a pirate that, you know, kills adults all day long and we don't bat, and we don't bat an eye. I mean, death is wrong, and yeah, you shouldn't be denying a family their son or whatever, uh, you know, through murder. But there are certain topics, whether we agree with it or not, that are more sensitive or takes more consideration than not. And if you do want to have this, you know, this, this personality, 
You know, do you want the countess that uh, has to bathe in the blood of a hundred virgins? And so she, you know, every year, a uh, hundred children from the, the capital city have to be marched out to the tower and sacrificed. You know, th it, it gets heavy, but that's also, that's that could really rile up your, your characters to say this is wrong and we got to do something about this. And so they're fighting for justice. I mean, whether we want to call it social justice or whatnot, I, I, I don't want to use words in our modern parlance that can uh, be divisive. But you can, it, when considering making a villain, you know, they all don't have to be Saturday morning cartoon villains, or we don't always have to tiptoe around certain topics. Villains are an excellent way to address issues that are taboo, issues that can be sensitive. If it is appropriate for the people sitting at your table and the context is there, and if you can do it, it doesn't have to be dignified. I mean, murdering, sacrificing kids, you know, to a, a bloodlust woman for the sake of vanity, you know, it's not like we're, we're treating all sides fairly or whatever. Um, but just make sure you're reading the crowd. And if you have this as a part of your story, it's doing something more than just accelerating a point of, oh, well, that's a bad guy because uh, he goes around and, you know, he's raping women. Or, yeah, he, you know, he just... He doesn't like kids, and so he just kills them. Like, you could present aspects of a story like that. It will create a bad character, but is it also bad storytelling? Um, so I, I don't want you to feel afraid of addressing societal issues because they can be uh, personified by a villain. And so by defeating the villain, you've overcome that mentality. You have made a point to everyone in the kingdom that here you had someone who was, uh, you know, was suppressing a group because of, uh, whatever, um, a, a, a lifestyle, uh, a religion, a psychology, uh, a, a physical trait that they couldn't control or the like. Um, and so they can be that personification. And, and so we can feel justified, right? Oh, we, we brought down the villain, especially as it gives us as the players in the real world in 2019, wherever you live, that sort of like endorphin rush of, yeah, we, we overcame something. You know, we won, we prevailed. Um, and that's an excellent feeling to prompt in your players as a DM. Make sure that it's handled responsibly. I can't tell you what that is because your tabletop is different from my tabletop. My tabletop is different than another person in this chat's tabletop. You have different tolerances as a DM or as a player, let alone many players at a table with a DM. So bear that in mind as we're talking about villains. Um, you can have very good, bad villains. Uh, and then you can have like a, a, a good villain that's really just poorly executed. And it kind of turns into a farce. So bear that in mind, please. Uh, it, it wasn't, it was a bit of a soapbox, I suppose, a, a little bit of a rant. Maybe not a rant, but when we're discussing this and we want stories, we want compelling emotional aspects to a game hitting some topics, you know, kind of like we were talking about cancer previously. The villain is spreading cancer. For some people sitting at your table, I mean, I think it's pretty universal, not, you know, we, we don't like cancer. It's, I think it'd be tough to find someone who's pro-cancer in any kind of a, a, a stance, right? But despite that unification, if you make that a theme, and you could even do it unknowingly, um, you could be upsetting one of your players. So it is worth considering, um, you know, to, to have that talk or uh, and not just as a DM where you have to, well, I should tiptoe. No, just talk about these things. If one of your players is getting upset at the table or pulls you aside afterwards, and players, don't be afraid to do this. Even be discreet and send a text message, even in the middle of a, of a box text. Communication is key. Just be like, you know, my dad, uh, I didn't tell anyone uh, because I didn't want to bring the mood down, but my dad just died to cancer uh, last month, and this is really hitting. Like th this is really hitting me hard. Uh, can we can we change it out? Are you gonna have a DM that says no? This has to be about cancer, and and uh, and you 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 got to get out of here because you're the bad person at the table. I guess you could. <laughs> you do read some stories on various message boards. 
uh, about a that guy DM. Hopefully you're not going to have that. But that's why communication is important, and that's exactly what storytelling is, is communication. All right, so anyway, with, with that uh, fun little uh, villainous lesson, uh, we have our, our villain prompts. Uh, so we can bear this in mind. Let's go to our Dungeon Master's Guide. If you have it at home, hey, play along. Go to page 74. And let's start rolling dice and using our imaginations in our skills of improvisation in order to build a villain. Let's roll a 20-sided die. Two. An aberration bent on corruption or domination. I was kind of hoping we get something kind of monstrous. Aberration bent on corruption or domination. This could almost be the form that one of our NPCs might turn into by the end of the adventure. I suppose we'll see. Hey, Grim Vex, welcome. <laughs> you just missed a very, uh, I was on a soapbox. Uh, talking about villain creation and uh, using them as sort of a, a platform to address various uh, topics. The objective or scheme of the villain is going to be found on page 94. So let's skip ahead. I'm going to roll a D8. Three. Also magic. And specifically, let's roll a D6. Five. Contact a lost deity or power. Just got home from Night Shift. Oh, well, uh, you'll you'll find it in the VOD, Grimvex, or if you watch the YouTube videos, uh, it'll be in our uh, in the second villain workshop YouTube video. Uh, we also had our miniature raffle. We gave out five boxes of minis tonight. Contact a lost deity or power. What is the method? that this character uses for that. On page 95, we're going to roll a d20. 13. Neglect. Interesting. Contact a lost deity or power, and the method for doing that is through neglect. Well, not just to the winners also, but uh, uh, Grimvex, everyone who subscribes to the channel is the ones that are providing the boxes in the raffle. The number of boxes given away is directly tied to the number of subscribers to the channel. And so it's a thank you from me to all of you. I'm just the medium in that case. For all of you who subscribe, you're the ones supplying the boxes that then go back out to the random winners. Um, so for all of you who have a little uh, dip and chip next to your name, regardless of uh, green, yellow, orange, or red, um, thank you for subscribing continuing your subscription or gifting a subscription because those are really what helps the channel stand out and that's what really makes it count uh, and I'm deeply uh, I'm deeply honored that all of you see the value in having such a channel like this and uh, to help keep it going through those subscriptions Our villain's weakness. Let's roll a d8. Five. The villain is destroyed if it speaks its true name. Ooh. Interesting, especially because we have this uh, this old abomination, or uh, ab uh, aberration. Could be an abomination, too. The occupation or history. This, uh, as we made for our last villain, we did this with our character generator, right? An occupation or a history is often told by the background of a character. Yeah, you can make an argument for the class and subclass, and we could roll that in if we want. What, what did this character do? How can we interpret its circumstances, its life? Because backgrounds are super crucial for characters in 5th edition. I mean, really, in all editions, this is a bridge, though, of crunch to fluff. Now, if we're making an aberration, I don't know, it could just have been born out of a test tube. And there's no real background. 
if you still want to challenge yourself and say, well, we could always do that, but let's see. Let's roll the dice and use it, right? If we're gonna, if we're unsheathing our dice and we're, we're gonna throw them on the table, let's use what we have. 12, a soldier. Now, there are uh, different kinds of soldiers. Let's roll a D8. Soldier number seven. We'll look that up in just a second. So that was uh, that was this character's background. And we can stop there if we wish. Is the character generator info on the Discord? Uh, yes, the spreadsheet should be pinned in Table Talk, DMs. The other sheets, I don't know if they are. They might not be. Off to bed. All right, hey, Grim. Uh... Thank you for stopping by. If you know if you're tired after work, uh, thank you for doing what you do, um, and uh, and for taking some time to stop by and say hi and to congratulate the winners. That's really awesome of you. So if, if you're going to bed, know that uh, you did a cool thing. If we want to produce a, a class, we can. In fact, this could even end up being you know a lesson on giving uh, class levels to monsters. If we'd like. Um, that, that could actually be interesting content. Mm, for tonight, maybe? Eh. If not tonight, maybe tomorrow. But anyway. Sure, so let's make this a soldier. And let's roll a 12-sided die. And figure out... It's, uh, it's class and it's subclass. We rolled an 8. A ranger. And this ranger, let's go odds or evens for a hunter or beast master. Evens. It is a beast master. Soldier. Ranger. Beast master. Now, interestingly enough, then, uh, depending on the number of levels, they're going to get some different advantages, including, by the way... Uh, favored enemy, and if that is a type of humanoid that's in the party, that could make this a, a very, uh, a much more dangerous uh, villain, right? Because it'll be hunting them. Hey, TJ, welcome. A gloom stalker? Uh, I mean, if we had that as a, as an option, then yeah, we could we could roll in a gloom stalker. This is the basic, you know, core rulebook generator. However, um, kind of a, a, a secret, a not a not so secret secret, but between you and me. Everyone kind of lean in close. I am going to make an expanded character generator that'll have all of the other options of uh, subclasses and the like from the different splat books. And that we could have some fun for a couple weeks, like opening up everything. It may not be everything, everything, because Adventurer's League has some custom stuff. I probably won't do Adventurer's League, but if it's in a printed, uh, if it's in a printed book, then I'll provide that content. You fell off your seat. Oh no, TJ. Oh no. <laughs> don't, uh, please don't send me a bill. Uh, and if you do, hey everyone, uh, apparently I'm not going to TwitchCon. I'm paying for TJ's uh, medical bills. Uh, the fighting style, let's roll it up real quick. D4. Four is two weapon fighting. And uh, yeah, let's just type this in real quick. Two weapon fighting. And I think they ultimately get three different terrains. If we want to give them enough levels. Otherwise, it's a monster. Whatever. Uh, let's roll a D8 three times and see what we get. And if we don't use them all, then at least we know the order in which we'd be unlocking it, depending on how many levels we're going to put to this monster. Five, four, and five. So we need to replace that last five. Five, four, and four. One more time. Five, four, and three. Uh, five, four, three for our terrains. That is going to be grasslands, forest, and desert. Hello, this works out very, very well. Uh, Misfit, uh, Misa back. Everyone having fun? Misfit, we're having an awesome time. Our first villain was compelling and great, and our second one is, is aiming to be the same. Uh-oh, TJ. I thought you were just saying hi to a username, so you, 
If you didn't say that, people might not have known. But yes, you might want to do that. Um. <laughs> uh, a, a purge? I, uh, bada, bada. Hey, let's do some more unboxings. Let's make this non PG 13. Let's make this non PG 13? So you want to make it G? Oh, shoot. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, but uh, 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 there you go, TJ. I'll have to be creative in my editing for YouTube then. I'll make sure that that doesn't show up. How am I? Mm, I can do this. I don't want to lose all the progress. Yeah, don't worry. I'll, I'll find a way to take care of it. And uh, I'll fix it in post, TJ. <laughs> I will. I'll have to. I could probably just... Uh, yeah, yeah. I could probably just cover it. I'm going to have to take it to the video editor then in any, in any case. Uh, all right. Yep. For doing one video, it shouldn't be uh, too terrible. No problem, TJ. I, I, I got you covered. If you go back and watch this on YouTube, you'll see that I've taken care of it. All right, so we have an aberration who was a soldier. Um, I don't think we're going to need this yet. Uh, we'll come back to it. Let's check out soldier real quick. Soldier number seven. Because this is going to play to his personality. A standard bearer. This soldier stood for something here. Standard bearer. Probably had, um, so probably had this, uh, you know, an animal companion uh, that traveled with him to help guard him while he's carrying the standard in case someone were to rush up and try and take the flag. It could have been a loyal dog or whatever. Maybe that's how he became an, or she, uh, how our villain became an aberration. What if the two did some kind of fusion dance? doesn't have to be a dog. Could have been something else. I don't know. Well, lots of circumstances. We can throw out ideas. <laughs> yep. Yep. TJ, you got it. You got it. All right, go back to our, our uh, guide here. Now let's go to the uh, the appearance. And that is going to be back on page 89. What is an interesting part of this character's appearance? Let's roll a d20. Six. A pronounced scar. Abilities, let's roll high and low with 2d6. Four and six. High intelligence, low charisma. This is making for a dangerous ranger. What is a talent that our villain has? Roll a d20. Seven. Seven. great at solving puzzles this is this is going to link us to an npc who is the same or wait yeah to an npc and even to a pc who also solved a puzzle which is what led to him being a warlock uh a gulak uh in particular which means if we have an aberration we could have some sort of a slime man or woman or or even uh, uh, whatever the, the animal companion was could have been fused and get a humanoid intelligence. I think this is giving us a lot of flexibility. Uh, the mannerism of this villain is a 2011. Makes constant jokes or puns. Yeah, 
Yeah, uh, Misfit, Twitch is, uh, something is causing Twitch to be absolutely uh, wrecked. I mean, not absolutely, that's an exaggeration, but uh, there's there's been a lot of uh, Twitch bugs going through, or little, little gremlins in the works. Can I have a quick look at the methods table? I want to see what the other options are in case my idea overlaps too much with those. Sure. Whoops. There you go. She'll take a drink while you're browsing. Oh, the villain method table. Got it. Okay. That's on page 95. Whoops. 95. Whoops. Uh, this is... I don't want to make it too small. Oh, yeah, I, there, it just put up in chat that I'm streaming again, even though I've been streaming the whole time. If you need me to zoom in on something in particular, let me know, but there's a lot of stuff here for villainous, uh, for villainous, uh, compulsions. All right, what is, how does this villain interact with others? Roll a 12. Three, blustering. Useful knowledge, uh, this is, our, this is our, our free spot in the middle of our bingo card. Useful knowledge is, uh, it's a good area for us to fill in any gaps. Uh, if we're not sure how to connect one randomly rolled aspect to another, the useful knowledge is an excellent uh, margin in which we can work for that. Okay, no problem, TJ. If you need a quick look at anything else, let me know. The ideal bond and flaw, you can go with the background that we rolled, and there's nothing necessarily wrong with that. Though, if we want to create a villain that's more focused or even seemingly more alien from the way that the characters are created using the prompts that are in this book uh, are you're going to get the same thing but different you know th they're going to still pursue things but in a different methodology um you know something that maybe is a little bit more broad so you could modify it on the fly if need be as a dungeon master we're going to roll 2d6 for this two and three an evil ideal of might now might it doesn't have to just be evil we may Look, our last villain is Lawful Good. And I think by everything we've described about her, she was Lawful Good. But that's making her a villain in this adventure because maybe our maybe our players aren't the best people. Right? They're all chaotic neutral. It doesn't mean they're bad people. Um, but they certainly have a different outlook on the world and what their sense of right and justice is. So this villain's ideal is Might. The villain's bond is on a D10. Seven. Protective of a sentimental keepsake. Ooh. We might be able to roll up what that is, or as a prompt again, we can use that to link into... Oh. Ooh, 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 ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. 
the other NPCs have such items. This villain could very well be chasing after them. If it's an aberration that was once a person, this could be the second eye. Right? One of the NPCs has an eye that's slowly turning her into a beholder, uh, which is, you know, we can call it something different, but is effectively like the Eye of Ra. It is a, a figure of religion, a figure of worship, a figure of knowledge, um, but maybe even a figure of wrath, because the sun does a lot of things, including destroying people and farmlands and, uh, you know, it's fire and all that other stuff. This could some be someone who is already... Uh, Oh, yeah, so we maybe we can make this into, like, a prophecy or something. We have one figure. You know, there's two eyes. Despite there being, um, despite, the like, the beholder being the eye of raw kind of a thing, you know, having one central eye, there could, all, there could be two eyes at all times. And so when the other person converts, they come together and they, they rebirth the god. So when the god is put down, the eyes... Uh, fall out or whatever, right? They Somehow the eyes are just... They survive. It's magic, it's artifact, it's legend and history and religion. They just do. And so the eyes are set to drift and, you know, maybe they pick up stuff along the way. Uh, you know, they're always watching, always sensing. And when the eyes are brought to, you know, are, are inserted and they transform, now we have these two avatars of this god. And when that happens, we get something like out of uh, the first Ghostbusters movie. You know, we, we get the uh, we, we get the, uh, the the key master and the the gatekeeper. And and so then these these transformed people, uh, you know, uh, insert the key into the gate, and the god is born. Very literally, the god is born from that. And that could usher in, uh, depending on the moral decisions of this uh, chaotic but neutral party, uh, the party could very well have a say in a brand new age or to continue what's been happening. And so truly, we could have an awesome, like, an end monster fight with this fledgling god being reborn. But the true battle is a moral battle. Because the player characters can simply say, yes, we want the god to be reborn. You know, praise be to whatever. Because it's time, you know, as the Joker, the first Batman movie said, the city, uh, the city needs an enema. And our chaotic neutral, everyone's chaotic neutral, by the way. It's just how we randomly rolled them. It was very fun. And uh, there are no coincidences, right? This was meant to happen. This moral decision was meant to be dropped into the laps of, of, these, uh, of these people. And so that could very well be a major aspect of the story. We have someone who's already turned and is villainous because he's after, or she, or it, probably by this case, uh, did what did what this compulsion is. We're already exploring nature and nurture. Uh, Tenacious D in the Pick of Destiny. Interesting, in my campaign, the Ancient Beholder is the Eye of Vecna. Instead of it being an artifact, the hand and eye are people. Oh, I like that. Um, in in Mind Misfit, uh, there's only ever one beholder. It's called the Poe. And uh, you become a beholder after you have uh, studied and meditated. It's like reaching a state of nirvana. Um, it's like opening that, uh, that eye, right? And so there are people who study and who move up the steps of the path. And so there is a Poe, and then there's an understudy. And when the Poe dies, there are there's like two understudies, and the understudies then, um, in a sense, not fight necessarily to the death or to obliterate, but each of them uh, step up to become the next Poe. <laughs> Does that have a Raven familiar? No, uh, it, it it doesn't unfortunately, at least not the ones that we've explored. Uh, but right, you reach this nirvana, you float, your eye is opened, you, you, you become something different. You have this mastery of knowledge and magic, and, and so it's a good way. Too cheeky? There's nothing cheeky about an Ed, Edgar Allan Poe reference. <laughs> uh, 
and so it's protective. And if they want to face this villain, maybe they have to, you know, maybe they have to pry the eye out of its mutated form or, or the like. Now, it's flaw or secret. Let's roll a d12. One. A forbidden... This writes itself, ladies and gentlemen. It writes itself. Forbidden love or susceptibility... Oh, I know, I, I ham-fisted that too. Romance. Wow, we've actually had... Uh, Captain Vivian, romantic interest. We have a story of, of history and romance and religion and nature versus nurture. Uh, like, we, we can have some good physical encounters. This story we're plotting is going to have some deep uh, moral and sentimental encounters and chances to address these thoughts. This is going to be a very contemplative adventure. Probably very, very roleplay heavy. Was a little too attached to the dog. Um, well, so yeah, the, so we, the the joke of you know the fusion dance of sorts. But yeah, uh, in, in a way, maybe um, we could definitely work with this. Maybe even hmm 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 hmm. The inspiration will come. I know that there are ways that we that will make this work. I'm kind of getting the idea, right? The other, the NPC hasn't turned villain yet. The NPC uh, found this eye in some ruins in the desert. Well, what if this soldier uh, was doing the same? Uh, they're marching through the desert. They were attacked by uh, another country's soldiers, or there was just, um, you know, uh, a large bandit gang was uh, was going to protect their oasis, thinking that the army was going to. Uh, invade them and instead like maybe the army was willing to pay for access or whatever and so they went out and they attacked and so we have our standard bearer loyal to the loyal to the cause right uh, fled into the desert and then also happened to come across as the timing is right right artifacts are acting kind of on their own or at the will of the gods um, also comes across a ruin or even came to the same ruin and what's interesting is the same ruin as it's explored, maybe it wasn't so much a ruin, it was hidden. But as he went through, that's when all the that's when all or most of the traps were triggered. And so it wasn't so much an obstacle course as it was a, a trap or a hazard area. He gets there and he finds, you know, maybe one of the ways, uh, maybe one of the ways forward, there's two chambers, each one holds an eye. Uh, either just he didn't find it or it was closed off or something uh, because of the way that this was meant to happen. And so he goes and he finds the eye. Something happens. Maybe he was injured along the way. Or maybe the maybe the beast, you know, if we were talking about like a raven, uh, flies forward and plucks up this eye. And uh, and maybe, uh, maybe even uh, by doing so, the animal is the one who, you know, have a raven now or uh, something similar can open its beak and there's an eye. Uh, but as he like landed, it, you know, it, it, the, the raven would talk. You know, the raven sort of like attached. And so we have this aberration of a person who is wearing almost like a, a headdress of sorts of, uh, of this raven. And the beak is open and there's the eye. But the, the body has been changing and mutating over all this time. Uh, but it, it, he, know, he knew that he needed to go and search out. Uh, maybe he didn't know that the eye was there. or The other one was so close. Went to go search out. Meanwhile, X amount of time passes. NPC also being chased down by bandits finds these ruins, and they're ruins now because the temple was collapsing on itself. Uh, however, that opened up the chamber to get the second eye. And so the character did so. And things happened as they did. Uh, hey, coffee! Uh, need to run to the corner store. Don't be grabbing my box. Oh, yeah, Misfit. Um, yeah, let's do some more unboxing. Sorry, I got on a soapbox about that. Um, which box did you want, uh, Misfit? Uh, if you can, well, if you're out, then just tell me when you get back, but, uh, let me know which one, which one you want. My soapboxes, I swear. <laughs> this is why, this is why I have to get a BTTV emote so y'all can spam it. And <laughs> tell me when I'm on a rant. Because, oh, I get into it. <laughs>
Yeah, well, I just got to get uh, BTTV to uh, realize that a picture of a wooden box with soap written on it is it doesn't count as the word soap with a non-transparent background because that's what it's supposed to be. Yeah, I get, yeah, but this is 2019 coffee. I don't have time to read a two-syllable word. I got to see a picture. <laughs> Suddenly, we've come full circle. We're talking about Egypt and the Arabian Peninsula. And, and we were more and more encroaching back into the concept of hieroglyphics as a language because it's so much easier just to see a picture than it is to, uh, to read words. <laughs> All right, so who was this person? We, we, can, we can come up with a, like a, a monstrous kind of... Um, uh, Bent on, uh, bent on corruption and domination, contact lost deity. I think that's all fitting into this character's story. We almost have a tragic villain at this point. You know, unmerciful, but tragic all the same. Which can make for a very compelling villain. Uh, so let's open this up real quick and find out who this person was before, I guess, we find out what monster they've turned into. We can use a beholder. I mean, that's kind of stereotypical. Let's roll percentile 90 oh 93 we actually have a multi-class if we multi-class we can there's nothing stopping us from going a ranger if we didn't want to do that it would be a male if we just went uh, uh, 1 to 50 then 51 to 100 I kind of wonder if all of our PCs are multi-classed Should one of our villains, or should our NPCs and villains be singular in order to help make a point about maybe that variety of life versus a more static path? Huh. Well, you know what? I rolled it. Let's roll with it and see if there's any inspiration here. Uh, whew, this this could make adding class levels to a monster be very uh, even even that much more interesting. All right, so if we did if we have this as a ranger, what is our multi class? Three. A cleric. Oh goodness. I think this is working out pretty well. Um. So clerics. Um, Kind of what we did to get our Oathbreaker Paladin for a villain. Um, you know, tend to have Death, Trickery, Tempest, or War. I reckon we can roll a... We can roll a percentile and see where it lands. Why not? <laughs> oh, gosh. 82. Tempest. Okay. Okay. Beastmaster Ranger, two weapon fighting, Tempest Cleric. Now let's roll again if we have a male or a female. 49. Uh, so if we're keeping the multi class, that's 1 to 45 is female, 46 to 90 is male. So we have a male. Uh, let's roll alignment. 67, 26. These are villains. They're both lawful. A lawful good and a lawful neutral. Lawful neutral, male. Let's roll a d10. One. Dwarf. Specifically, odds, mountain, a mountain dwarf. And we have a mountain dwarf in the party. This is building an awesome connection. Wait, I think we have a mountain dwarf in this party. Or was it the artificer I was thinking of? I know we, I, yeah, we had an artificer one. I don't know if we had a dwarf in this party. I'll have to go back and check. Lawful neutral male mountain dwarf.
Uh, I won't worry about physical stats, but how old is he? 74. Middle-aged. This is definitely uh, no campaign for old uh, for old men. Well, actually, it is a campaign. Uh, so it's more like, what's the, the Walter Matthau and uh, Jack Lemmon? Grumpy old men. <laughs> Everyone is middle-aged, uh, middle-aged, old, or ancient. <laughs> so what is middle age for a dwarf between 101 and 150? So let's roll a 50-sided die. 150. Uh, middle-aged, 150-year-old, lawful neutral male mountain dwarf. Who is a uh, a Beastmaster Ranger and Tempest Cleric? It's heavily weighted for Death Cleric because the way that I set up the role guide as Death Clerics being for evil characters only, even though they don't have to be evil to do that, I wanted to give a chance. Like so, this is really our major chance at creating a death cleric on the stream, in the in the year or so now that we've done it. I think we've only made one or two. Um, however, an evil character can also tend to. Uh, it, it was playing to kind of these uh, these concepts. So if you don't have a death cleric, you know they they're probably going to be more trickery, tempest, or war. Now, when I go and I redo these sheets. I don't necessarily mind just opening everything up and having it just be a straight D8 so we can make a lawful good death cleric because you can have a, law a lawful good death cleric. Um, so that's an excellent question, Coffee, but in the initial concept of the document, kind of like how Drow. Uh, Drow are in the player's handbook. However, in a random generation of it, to keep it a little bit rarer, um, a Drow would only come about if we rolled an evil elf and even then there was just a, a higher chance, right, um, uh, for that to happen. Um, if elf is rolled, we, uh, you may choose for it to be a drow, and then for the alignment, uh, we, we spread it out over, you know, it must be evil, it could be neutral, or it could be good as a rare percent chance to provide uh, arbitrary lines in the sand. Yeah. But we'll see if this gets touched up here when I go through and revise them. And I'll, I'll still stick with a core sheet, but then I'll also make an expanded one that will have the content from the hardcover books in it. I definitely see this character is more of the, you know, we're talking religion, we're talking philosophy. We have our two lawful characters that are, are standing for order and standing for orderliness in a society that's producing these five chaotic neutral party members. I can see that they are going to confront them because you have, you know, these followers of these, uh, of these gods or this deity asleep, dead or otherwise who want to impose this order on the region. And so that is what is going to be the exploration that the characters are going to have through the NPCs and through the villains. I think this worked out so very well to give us uh, writing prompts, to give us themes, to give us moral quandaries, which, by the way, the DMG has moral quandaries. If you're not sure... Uh, if you're not sure what you want to do, uh, because you want a moral quandary, there's actually a random table for those. Yep, and so we could do something like that, Coffee Cat, uh, you know, where I, I want to keep a, a good chunk of what we do from the core books because I want this to be approachable. But I think that we can also, in uh, you know, maybe maybe one once a month we'll we'll just open it up uh, or if we're making a party, we'll make sure that, you know, three or four characters are predominantly a, uh, you know, from the player's handbook only. I mean, with the splash of the DMG for the Oathbreaker and for Death uh, Domain. But maybe the fifth one could be a wild card. 
where it could be a Yonti. You could have the Haunted One background from Curse of Strahd. Uh, we could bring in subclasses from Skag. We can do a lot of that stuff. Um, because I'm, I'm open to this as a channel. You know, if you all want to see this content, I, I want to present it. And I, I want to meet that as in the best way I can. While also making sure that as an instructional channel, uh, we're still keeping to a, a firm amount of the basics. And if we make an exception, we can focus on that exception and say, if you want to include it, it's here. This is what you can consider. I will present the material on the screen so you don't have to buy the book. Um, and you could just follow along there or just listen. A lot of people just listen as they're doing other things. And that is perfectly fine. If that's one of you out there, hey, continue playing video games, having fun. Listen to this in the background. I appreciate it. I am very curious, though, because I keep thinking those are the NPCs. Dragonborn, Dragonborn, Halfling, Tiefling, Gnome. Okay. Yeah, it was the Mountain Dwarf was the... The Mountain Dwarf was the leader of the artificers in the prior campaign that we made. Oh, you're welcome, Cyart. Oh, uh, Cyart, if you're having some uh, uh, trouble with what you were talking about, uh, you might be able to ask a couple of the other artists in our channel because they may have some knowledge or might have encountered something similar and, and could give you some advice. I definitely get lots of inspiration from the channel. Keep up the good work. Uh, well, I'm, I'm so happy for that, Coffee. And also, Coffee, I hope that you enjoyed the lore uh, that you were receiving last night in the RP game. Um, I know that we had talked about it, and I know that I don't always act the quickest. If anything, I, I'm, I like to think that I'm more of an aircraft carrier, right? I'm solid. You know, I'm this fortress, good armament, you know, a lot of stuff. But darn it if I'm not slow, especially to turn or change course. But when I do... You better watch out because I'm I'm coming. <laughs> oh Lord, he coming. Tuesday game definitely gives me lots of art prompts. Oh yeah, that that's excellent. I'm I'm happy to unlock that creativity in you as well. Because if you're drawing with passion or this idea, uh, I think the quality uh, comes out more. Not that you produce bad quality, but uh, I, I think you get what I'm saying, right? And it also might embolden you to try different styles to try different mediums because the passion is there and you can more vividly see it play out so that when you're experimenting, you might be more bold to do so because you have this solid lighthouse on the horizon that, you know, if you kind of wibble or wobble back and forth, you're still going towards that goal. We have so much excellent content here, my golly. Um, oh, you know what? I suppose if we're going to turn this character into an aberration of some kind. Taking on elements. I guess we could just choose a monster. It doesn't have to be an aberration uh, per aberration. We could just randomly roll because, you know, anything that's not a dwarf and is sort of is a mutation is an aberration of some kind. All right. So if there are. Uh, these are more the NPCs. Wolves. I guess we could include animals. You know what? I'm just going to go three. Uh, I'm going to roll a 354 sided die and let's just pick a random page out of the monster manual. And this is how this person is converting 354 
and roll it. 255. There we go. A pseudo dragon. The elusive pseudo dragon dwells in the quiet places of the world, making its home in the hollows of trees and small caves. With its red brown scales, horns, and a maw filled with sharp teeth, a pseudo dragon resembles a tiny red dragon, but its disposition is playful. Um, pseudo dragons have little interest in other creatures and they avoid them whenever possible. If it's attacked, a pseudo dragon fights back using the poisonous stinger at the tip of its tail. One jab of which can put a creature into a catatonic state that can last for hours. Uh, draconic familiars. Language of emotion. Um, all right, so maybe this is. Maybe he's not turning into one of these. Or rather, if his beast companion. If his beast companion might have found the eye or was caught, was brought into contact here, maybe that is what the beast has become, is a pseudo-dragon. Let's roll again. Page 7. <laughs> what monsters to use? That's what we're asking you. Uh, aberrations are utterly alien beings. Many of them have uh, innate magical abilities drawn from the creature's alien mind rather than mystical forces of the world. Uh, Abolus beholders. Beholders are aberrations. My goodness. So I guess, I guess going beholder, I guess going beholder is meant to be. We rolled it. It discusses aberra uh, aberrations beholders. That was kind of the direction we're going in. You know what? If a random dice roll on 354 sides of a die is telling us to go Beholder, where he's going to turn into a Beholder, and uh, his his beast has turned into a Pseudo-Dragon. Playful, I know where the puns came from. Definitely want to experiment with some more anime-style art in the near future. Well, hey, if you if you broadcast it, we shall watch. So much good content. Crikey, this is this is an adventure. I mean, really, th this could just be a fantasy novel that we've just outlined. You could write this rather easily as a 300-page uh, fantasy novel. Or a good project for NaNoWriMo in November. Oh, I understand, Coffee. I, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you, I'm, I'm razzing you a little bit. Uh, you broadcast whenever you want. Uh, it's, it's no problem. Hmm. So the pseudo dragon can fly out. It blends in with the, the wastelands. Probably scouts for this person. Man, man, man. This is really, really good. Is that uh, villain prompts, NPCs? Oh, it's a hardware problem, not a software one. Gotcha. Every hour the computer is freezing for a second, and if I'm in the drawing program, it closes it. And if I do not save, I lose everything every time. It's very frustrating. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, shoot. I'm sorry to hear that, SciArt. Well, hopefully it's, a, it's an easy fix, maybe like improving ventilation if it's heating up. 
if it's if it's a regular cycle it might just you know get to a point where it says whoa i'm way too hot and shuts down cools off goes on and then heats back up shuts off um so i don't know if you have like a fan or it, whether it's a replacement fan or if you just have extra ventilation maybe you can move it away from a wall i'm not a computer expert that's the first thing that came to mind it could very well be something else Back with my comfort food. Time to get comfy and happy. Oh, hey, Fluffy. Uh, it, it could be malware then. Uh, oh, yeah, that, that's affecting the hardware. Think you're streaming some character building tomorrow. Do you find chat is helpful with designing or is it more for fun? Uh, lost streaming, uh, by the way, thank you for finding us and welcome. And, uh, Hey, if you, uh, if you're going to stream workshop stuff, uh, I'd love to know. Cause I, I like networking with other workshop streamers. Uh, so you are welcome to, uh, to hop over if you'd like, uh, over to the discord and you can post whenever you go live on there. Um, the chat, the chat is amazing for storytelling. The things that your that your audience will help come up with. Or if you say, all right, I have a pen and I have a pineapple and you're like, what do I do with it? And someone shouts out pineapple pen. And you're like, yes, of course, pineapple pen the whole time. Um, like They come up with some interesting stuff, even if it seems obvious. Oh, beautiful coffee. That is a beautiful Welsh accent. Uh, got it. That delicious queso. Thank you so much, uh, Coffee. I very much appreciate it. And Lost Streaming, thank you for the follow. Um, but yeah, streaming, interaction with the audience, it's not just for interaction purposes. Audiences that watch you in a workshop are very fun and creative. Um, and you can come up with some amazing stuff. Um, you know, for following us here, if you watch our VODs, you go to YouTube and you check us out there. Or if you do visit us on Discord, you'll find the sheer amount of creativity that has been unleashed. It is amazing. And I went to get some milk for my coffee, a food that only exists in the state I live. Oh, for your coffee milk. Oh, so instead of chocolate milk, it's coffee milk? It's like pre-blended? Power supply is a common cause of general flakiness. That, that could be it. Um, oh, shoot. And by the way, Misfit, you're back. We need to pop open a box for you. A box of minis. Coffee milk. It's coffee-flavored syrup like chocolate milk. Ah, I like that. I, we probably don't have it here in Ohio, but I do like the sound of that. Yeah, Lost Streaming. If you need help with that, we also have a mentor network. Uh, we have a streamer mentor network. We have an, an RP workshop mentor network. We have a writing and art mentor wor uh, uh, workshop as well. There's a lot of resources. If you want to see the things that we've done here, I'm, you're welcome. If something works for me and it works for you, use it. I, I, there's nothing here that's copywritten, right? Not by me, anyway. Mmm, <laughs> coffee, says Coffee Cat Comics, who's probably biased. 